What's the difference between a short sale and a foreclosure? If you're wondering that question, stay with me because I'm going to be breaking that down for you right now. Welcome back to my channel. I am Jody Cordell, the savvy agent from Spence Properties right here in Crestview, Florida. So what's the difference between a short sale and a foreclosure? Well, let's break it down. Let's say you're a homeowner who can no longer afford to pay the mortgage due to some catastrophic event that has recently happened in your life. You're so far behind in your mortgage payments that there's no possible way for you to ever catch up. This could be the result of a family member losing their job or someone in your family getting really sick and possibly dying maybe the main income provider. So what do you do? Well, that's gonna depend a lot on a few different pieces of data. First, what is the current real estate market like? Is it a seller's market or is it a buyer's market? How much do you owe on your mortgage? Can you sell your home right now and cover the balance of your mortgage? Or is the balance on your mortgage higher than the actual current market value of your home? In other words, are you upside down on your mortgage? These are all questions that need to be answered before you can go any further. Now, once you've addressed those questions, your first priority should be to talk to your lender. They will most likely be able to assess your situation and determine the best course of action for your unique situation. Once your mortgage goes into default, you may have fewer options available to you. If your home qualifies for a short sale, that's gonna be your best option. It'll save you from going through a painful foreclosure. What's the difference between a short sale and a foreclosure? They're both options for a homeowner who has fallen on difficult financial times and can no longer afford to pay their mortgage. But a short sale is gonna be much more favorable to you. It allows the homeowner to maintain ownership of the home while trying to sell it. The lender does not file judgments against the homeowners during a short sale. So you'll be able to continue to live in the home until the home sells. Once the home does sell, in many cases, you're, you're not gonna be responsible for the deficiency balance or the amount of the outstanding balance of the mortgage that the home sale did not cover. Not to mention, a short sale is much easier on your credit score. You're gonna see a ding, maybe a substantial one, but it doesn't stay on your credit like a foreclosure does. Those stick around for seven years, ouch. On the other hand, the foreclosure process begins when a homeowner defaults on their mortgage payments anywhere from three to six months. Once the mortgage is in default, you need to talk to your lender if you haven't already. And if you do qualify for a short sale at that point, you would begin that process. But if you don't qualify for a short sale, you're gonna have a time period to pay the outstanding balance before the foreclosure process starts. That's the pre-foreclosure period. And if the debt isn't cleared during the pre-foreclosure period, the bank or the lender is gonna schedule an auction to recoup their losses as quickly as possible. In a foreclosure situation, the homeowner will be evicted from the property against their will. Now, if the home doesn't sell at auction, it becomes a bank owned property or an REO or real estate owned. And the bank is gonna to continue to try to sell the property in order to make up any losses. From a buyer's perspective, a foreclosure property will be able to close much more quickly typically. Short sales are notoriously longer closings because the lender has to approve the offer presented by the buyers. So it's in your best interest as the homeowner to make sure that you only submit reasonable offers to the lender for their approval. As a buyer, if you have a lot of patience and determination, you can find a beautiful home at a great price, but just be aware that the closing could take up to a year. So if you're in a hurry to move into your new home, a short sale may not be the best choice for you. One thing about strategy, do not try to swindle your way into a short sale. It's a waste of time. Remember, the bank is agreeing to do this short sale, but they wanna recover as much of their losses as possible. So if you're considering buying a short sale, make a reasonable offer. That'll give you a better shot at getting your offer accepted by the lender. If you're considering buying a short sale property, do not do it alone. Hire a real estate agent like me to help you through the process. And if you're selling your home as a short sale, you're gonna to need to contact a really good real estate agent and possibly an attorney to get through this process. It's a lot more complicated than just a traditional home sale. Plus, using a real estate agent is gonna help you get your home sold faster and for more money, which is gonna make the lender really, really happy. So be sure to tap into that resource to help you through what can be a really difficult sales process. I hope that answers some of your questions about short sales. And if you like this content, be sure to give me a thumbs up and drop me a comment below and let me know what any other questions you might have about short sales or about anything related to real estate. Again, I'm Jody Cordell, the savvy agent from Spence Properties here in Crestview, Florida, and I will see you on the next video.